The question I'm asked most often has to be child support. Do I have to pay it? And how much am I going to have to pay? As always, the short answer is it depends, but the Texas Family Code outlines if you are going to pay child support, how that may actually work. In Texas, physical possession often determines who should be paying child support. As you would assume, if you have the child more often than not, you probably won't pay child support. In the inverse, if you're the non-custodial parent and you don't have your child more often than not, it's likely you will be paying child support. Texas Family Code Chapter 154 outlines how child support is to be calculated. The guidelines state that child support is dependent on a party's net monthly income and the number of children that are in need. Before we're able to determine a party's net monthly income, we must first determine a party's gross monthly income. Gross income is inclusive of any monies a party receives or earns as income each month, inclusive of normal wages, overtime, and bonuses. Income from investments such as interest and dividends may also be included in this calculation as well. Once the monthly income is established, we must then apply a handful of deductions to reach the monthly net income figure. The Texas Family Code allows us to deduct Social Security taxes, federal income taxes, and state income taxes as well. When applicable, we may also deduct mandatory union dues, as well as the monthly cost for the children's health insurance coverage, should the obligor be providing said coverage. After all deductions have been made from the gross monthly figure, we're able to then have our net monthly resources figure. At this point, calculating child support becomes fairly simple. The Texas Family Code outlines percentages to be applied to a party's net monthly income, dependent on how many children are before the court and how many children an obligor may have that aren't before the court. As you can see in this chart, should an obligor parent have no other children, the percentage applied starts at 20% and increases an additional 5% for each additional child until a 40% threshold is reached. For each additional child an obligor has that is not before the court, a slight reduction to the percentage is applied. For clarity, let's walk through an example together. Let's assume an obligor parent has two children before the court, but one child not before the court. Let's also assume that this parent works a typical nine to five job earning $60,000 per year and that this parent does not provide health insurance for the child, but rather the custodial parent is the one providing the insurance. As you know, we must first determine a party's gross monthly income. Here, with our obligor earning $60,000 per year, we divide that figure by 12, as there are 12 months in the year, to come to a $5,000 gross monthly figure. From here, we apply the mandatory deductions to our $5,000 gross monthly figure. As you remember from the child support chart viewed earlier in this video, we can see that a specific $5,000 round number makes this example very easy. As you can see, this brings us to a net monthly figure of $4,101.87. Using the percentage guidelines we previously discussed, when a party has two children before the court, but one child not before the court with whom they have a duty to support, a 22.5% number is applied when determining our final child support figure. Here, we multiply our net monthly figure of $4,101.87 by 22.5% to arrive at a monthly child support figure of $922.92. Ultimately, and as always, parents can always come to an agreement on a figure outside of this guideline number. As you remember, reach an agreement or go ask a judge. At the end of the day, I always recommend talking to your attorney about child support or any other family law question you may have. If you're interested in talking to our team about child support or any other family law question you may have, you can reach out to us at 817-900-3220 or to our website at familytexas.com.